Yeah, I want to welcome everybody today. My son and daughter came down from Polson. Happy to have them here. And along with the guests in the front seat. Last, I guess when Pastor was here last, he said that we need to be copycats, followers of Christ. A couple of weeks ago, Mike preached on the bare facts. Last week, Joe mentioned, spoke on the marriage. Husband and wives, the unity, the stability, subjection. My subject today it follows right along in Ephesians, and it follows along right after Joel, but I think it'll have a little bit different twist. So, if you want to all stand for the reading of the word. It's Ephesians 28 to 33. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as Lord of the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. And for this cause... Shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning the church and Christ. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. You can be seated. Before I go any further, there's a prayer I wanted to pray also. And it's found in Ephesians. It's Ephesians 3, 16. I pray that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with the saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. Amen. 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 You'll have to bear with me a little bit. I'm not uh, a public speaker, but I believe the Lord gave me something, and I just want to share that. If we go through these, because that's what I was going through, I thought it seemed sort of simple. These verses, 28 through 33, talks about marriage. Talks about a husband and wife, wife and husband. Talks about Christ and the church. And I believe this is referring to everybody. It's not just about marriage and husband and wife. He's using that as as an example. So as I broke it down and went through this, and I thought it was pretty simple, and thought about it, and then listened to Joe last week, and it really started hitting me a little harder. It is simple, but if you think about it, there is the mystery. And I'll explain that a little bit later. But I started out just sort of tearing each verse apart. It said, men ought to love their wives as their own bodies. That seems pretty simple. 
person gets infection, sliver in their hand or something and gets infected, they take care of it. You don't let it fester. You don't want it to get any deeper. You try and take care of things. It says, He that loves his wife loves himself. And that seems sort of simple too. I know, well, I should ask, I guess, how many men in here have perfect wives? <laughs> how, many, how many wives have perfect husbands? Uh, cool. I'm glad to see that. I really am. I know I've got a perfect wife. I don't know if I'm a perfect husband. But you know what? Neither one of us are perfect. They even called Christ when they said, good master. He says, why call me good? He says, the Father in heaven is good. As I kept breaking this down, It said, as the Lord, the church. The Lord loves the church. He cherishes, nourishes the church. So where does love come from? You know, that seems to be a misused word. We fall in love or we love ice cream. I mean... They use it for a lot of different things. But in the word, what's going through here is agape, which is a very special love from the Lord. But it's also a love that we have to each other and to the Lord. It's a choice. It's not something we fall into. Might love ice cream? No. But you have a great desire. It brings pleasure to your taste buds. But it's not a true love. Love comes from God, it says. God loves the church. He cherishes it. Well, how does he do that? Well, if we go to Hebrews. Should be on the board here, I think. Says he is able to save them. To the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeking he lives to make intercession. He ever lives to make intercession for them. In Psalms there's one that says, he's our defense. First John says, hereby... We perceive the love of God because He laid down His life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. He's our defense. He's given Himself for us. He nourishes us. I remember the story of of Jesus when he was talking to his disciples. He counsels. You know, we're supposed to counsel also with our wives. If we go back through Old Testament, Malachi it says, the wife is your companion by covenant. Samuel says he comforts his wife. In Genesis, Jacob consulted with his wives. And we know that a cord of three strands isn't quickly broken if we keep Christ in the center of our life. He's there for us, loving us, cherishing us, and nourishing us.
As husbands, sometimes we overlook the gifts that our wife has. Sometimes it's pride. Maybe our ego. But we came to these women with our hearts. We came to them understanding that we all have weaknesses and we all have strengths. And sometimes it's hard for us as husbands to acknowledge the strengths that we have in our wives. And that's one of the mistakes that I think we make. It says husbands are held responsible for the decisions because Christ, according to the word, told that we are head of the house as Christ is the head of the church. Doesn't make the woman any less valuable. But we're held responsible. So we can't let pride or anything else interfere in our relationship with our wives. The last verse says, Wives, respect your husband. What does respect mean? Respect, when I looked it up, says his phobia. Sounds sort of weird because doesn't that sound like a phobia? You know, people have phobias of spiders and snakes. And, but that isn't what it refers to. It says, not under absolute control. Excuse me. Phobia, not under absolute control. That means as we are held responsible for our decisions and we can counsel with the wives It means that they still have certain responsibilities. Reverence, not under control. But it also means, it also means that uh, they're to honor. In the Old Testament, it's kabed. It's to promote in good sense, honorability. In the New Testament, it's referred to revere, prize, value. The word is to mile. To prize, to value. Pastor Lynn, when he was speaking, he spoke of love. Love being value. You value somebody. And if you value somebody, if you have a treasure, if that is your treasure, you're not going to let it be harmed. We spoke of treasure. And we spoke of cherish. Cherish is kakan. It means to minister to, to treasure, to foster. The mystery. So far that probably hasn't meant too much to anybody yet seeing that up there and the mystery. But if we get into if we get into verse thirty two it says, This is the great mystery that I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let everyone in particular, so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Well, I got to thinking about that. What is, what is the mystery? Because it didn't make a lot of sense to me when it said mystery in there either. 
But in mystery, it says in the Greek, mysterion. And when I looked it up, it says secret. The idea of being silent. And it made a lot of sense. In the Old Testament, there was very few that knew of Christ. It wasn't a general knowledge to the, you might say, to the public. But in the New Testament, Christ made it available to all. The mystery, like I said, isn't the man and the woman. Husband and wife. The mystery is right here. And not that building, but the people who come into the building. And it's not just this building. There's other buildings that have people coming in. The mystery is our relationship to Christ. Amen. Husbands, love your wife. Wives, reverence your husbands. Well, we know that Christ, as a husband, nourishes us. We're part of his body. We're his church. Builds us up. He helps us in every way. He's there for us. Even when we don't understand or we don't hear him or see him, we don't feel him. But he's there for us. So the mystery isn't there. The mystery is we as a church, or you might say as the wife, the bride of Christ, how do we reverence him? If you love me, you keep my commandments. There was two words in there that I didn't go through yet. It said, be joined with your wife. The other one is cleave. To be joined or to cleave means to reason together. Another Translation of cleave is glue, adhesive. And I noticed there was one important word when you read that. It says, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined or cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. It doesn't say that you cleave to anybody else. It says you cleave to your wife. It doesn't say the wife is to cleave to anybody else either. Sir, to honor, respect her husband. So this is my question. As couples, and not all of you are couples yet, but it still refers to you, whether you're single or married, you're still part of the bride of Christ. How are you going to treat your husband? How are we going to respect our God, our Lord? How are we going to reverence Him, stand in awe of Him? And how are we going to go about doing what He has for us? The mystery, He said, was the Father and I are one. And for that, he, they tried to stone him. But he says also that we, being his church, being his bride, being part of his body, we also are one. So I'm going to close... With that statement, we, being the bride of Christ, need to reverence 
our Lord, our husband. We need to do as Jesus asked. Keep his commandments if we love him. And remember, love is a choice. After the prayer, if there's anyone that wants to come up, I'm sure any of the elders and leaders here would be glad to pray with anybody. Lord, thank you for the word today. Help us to hear what you've had to say. Help us to utilize it, Lord God, for your glory and honor. And I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you. Amen.